Giolito and the White Sox retained their Win Trust Crosstown Classic trophy last night after a two game sweep of the Cubs. This was the White Sox team photo in the clubhouse after last night's game. All right, for more on the White Sox and the Cubs, we bring in now of NBC Sports, he's family, the great John Morosi. <laughs> okay, JP, let's talk about the White Sox. I believe, and I said this last week, that's a team that's about ready to take off. Do you believe that? Cap, I do, and thanks for the warm welcome, my friend. I, I really believe the White Sox still have the best roster in the American League Central. Now, certainly some injuries they've dealt with most recently with Andrew Vaughn, but in general, this is a team that I believe is primed for a huge month of May. Of course, three straight wins as we enter uh, this next series at Fenway Park. And in general, I look at what Tim Anderson has done. He's been the catalyst for them at the top. As soon as maybe one or two more bats in the middle take that step forward, I believe this team will still stand out as the best one in their division. I've been really encouraged by certainly Michael Kopech, Dylan Cease to begin the season. Once you knew that those two pitchers were fully lined up, ready to take that next step for them in the rotation, I think the White Sox have the foundation to still win the American League Central. Do you also believe, I do, that if they're healthy and they get Lucas Giolito to be able to be there every fifth day, he's back from injury, they get Lance Lynn back, this is a team that you absolutely have to have in World Series conversation. I do. I, I believe the White Sox are part of that conversation. I think it's a big conversation right now, though, in the American League, because you look at how well the Yankees are playing right now. Toronto, their rotation, I think they are going to be one of the teams that no one wants to face in the postseason because of the way that Alec Manoa and Kevin Gossman have pitched, along with their opening day starter, Jose Barrios. And then out west, the Los Angeles Angels, Cap, I think are really playing great baseball Shohei Otani with a huge outing at Fenway today was really impressive to see. Mike Trout is back to himself. Taylor Ward's been a revelation for them. So I think there's a lot more teams right now, I would say, Cap, that, that have a chance to win the American League than maybe I thought when the season began. And I think with, with the White Sox in general, they have to just get back to their identity. And, and we're so far into the season now, actually a quarter of the way through, and the White Sox have one of the lowest run scoring outputs of any team in the major leagues. That is not going to continue. That's not who they are. They are a team that can slug it. And I think as soon as they get their full complement of hitters back, we'll start to see that team that we all forecasted. I think the White Sox will be part of that conversation come the middle part of the season. There was a lot of angst, John, when Tony La Russa got the job. There were people go, what are you doing hiring this guy? White Sox Nation was not happy. He won the division last year. They go to the playoffs. He's got a team built, as you said, to make a long run. And Tim Anderson was quoted by NBC Sports Chicago a week ago where he said, that guy's like a best friend. We've really developed an amazing relationship. Are people undervaluing the importance of a manager of that quality? You know, David, it's a great question. And what I'll say is this. You look at the teams that made it far in the playoffs last year. Brian Snitker. Dusty Baker, two of the oldest managers in the game. They were in the World Series last year. Tony La Russa got his team to the World Series, or got his team to the playoffs, rather. So there are, there are a lot of managers right now in the game who have experience where actually I think that the experienced managers have an advantage. Check out what's happening right now for the New York Mets in Buck Showalter. He has come in there, his fourth or fifth managerial job in the major leagues, and is doing a great job there with the Mets and taking that team to the next level. So I really think there's something to be said for experience, for managers that can meld the information that players are getting with that know-how of the human element of the game. And I really think, David, you, you take a step back. All teams now 30, have plenty of analytics. They all do. I think that competitive advantage, I'm not saying it's gone away, and there are still minor advantages to be had there when you do the analytical parts of the game really well. But I, I think, for me, David, the, the managers that I am most impressed by are those that can help players sort out the information. What I want to have in my mind when I'm trying to hit a 100-mile-an-hour fastball and those pieces of information that might make me actually a little slower than I need to be. To know what is valuable and what is not for the individual player. That, to me, is the most important job of the manager now, someone who communicates very well. Look at Joe Madden. He's in first place now with the Angels. Check out how many experienced managers are having success now in their second or third or fourth or fifth managerial job. Experience right now, Cap, I think is hugely important in the major leagues.